So the following is an introduction to using conditional statements in Python, and by this we mean things like if statements. These are ways of ch branching the code to decide whether or not we want to give to do certain things depending on whether certain conditions are met or not. Uh, important keywords in Python are if, elif, and else, and we have conditional symbols like the double equal. We don't use equal to test if something is equal to something else. We use the double equal. A single equal sign is usually used for um, assigning a variable to another, and here we want to test whether one thing is the same as another, and for that we use the double equal. The exclamation point equal is not equal. Then we have less than, less than or equal, greater than, greater than or equal, and then keywords and, or, and not, which also work. In addition, there are two keywords, true and false, that we can use. As an example, suppose we have a variable 5.5. A simple if statement would be if x is less than 10, colon, then we do something. In this case, we print x is less than 10. So the key uh, structure here is the statement if, and then we have a condition which will either evaluate to true or false, followed by a colon. If the statement evaluates to true, then we go inside and evaluate the contents of the if block, and if the statement evaluates to false, then none of the if statement is uh, performed and we uh, pass along as if nothing happened. Here's another example. So if x happens to um, not be less than 10, we can say what to do with an else statement. So in this case, if x is less than 3, print x is less than 3. Otherwise, use the keyword else and again a colon. Otherwise, print x is greater than or equal to 3. So again, we have a condition. Does that evaluate to true? In this case, it doesn't, so we don't do this. But <coughs> it's greater than 3. It, because this is false, uh, we get this else and we go inside and say that x is greater than or equal to 3. If we ever evaluate something in the if statement that's true, then the else won't be evaluated. There's another keyword for, el um, for else if. So if this happens, otherwise if this happens, and that keyword is elif. So we don't use else if, we use elif. E-L-I-F. So in this case we have if x is less than 3, then do this, else if x is less than 4, then uh, evaluate the second statement. And we can combine all those together. So if x is less than 3, then do this print statement, else if it's less than 4, do this. Otherwise, every other case, uh, print the final value. So in this case, only one of these would be hit, depending on which one is true. In a case like this, if you have multiples of these chained up, then we would have only one of them would happen even if several are possible. So in this case, if x was 2, then it would be true that this and this are true, but because this is because this evaluates to true, we don't uh, we don't go this else if isn't hit, and the whole block would only print x is um, greater than or less than 3. So we can have multiple elif statements, and those are as listed here. You can have if condition, else if condition, elif condition, elif condition, etc., and then wrap it all up with else. These statements can be a little bit more complicated. We here have used a simple statement, but really what you need is some statement that evaluates to true or false, and that can be more complicated. In this case, we have the quantity, the following quantity, x greater than 3 and less than 6, or less than or equal to 1. And we can use parentheses to group our conditional statements together. So in this case, we'd have this thing or this thing. If, one, if, if either this quantity, in parentheses, or this quantity evaluates to true, then the whole thing evaluates to true, and we'll go inside the if statement. If this is false and this is false, then we won't. Then neither of them are true, and we won't go inside. 
Uh, blank lines don't matter, and you can put as many statements as you want inside as long as they're indented. As, you, as soon as you stop indenting, the, uh, the if statement is finished. We can use variables or expressions in if statements. So before we were saying x greater than 3, we can compare variables directly. So if t min is 298.15 and t is 500, we can compare t less than t min, t greater than t min times 10, and in this case, t min less than or equal to t, and t less than or equal to 10 times t min, as examples. Um, so in summary again, the basic the basics are you start with the keyword if, you give it some expression that will evaluate to true or false, and that can be complicated and involve all of these keywords and or and not statements, or even true or false statements. So you could do if and then just type true, and that will always evaluate to true. Or if false and it will never happen, and that would be an easy way to turn your code off, for instance, is to just wrap it in an if false statement so it never happens. There's also a condensed if statement, and that can be written as follows. So it reads as if you were uh, uh, kind of naturally t equals 298.15 if some condition, in this case x is less than 5, else 500. So t is going to be either 298.15 or 500 depending on whether x is less than 5 evaluates to true or not. So again, t is equal to 298.15 if this happens otherwise it's equal to 500. So an example of using this would be suppose I want to take the square root and make the argument positive if it would have been negative. So I can't take the square root of a negative number so if we uh, have a negative number make it positive before we take the square root. So here I have x is minus 9. If I go print x to the 0.5 power, then I would get, uh, I'd get the imaginary number 3i, in this case it's 0 for the real part, plus uh, 3j, and j is Python's uh, symbol for the imaginary number i. So effectively we're getting 3i for the square root of minus 9. Now, because this is negative, we can say uh, an alternative statement is y equals this quantity raised to the 0.5 power. And this quantity will evaluate to just plain x if x is positive, otherwise it's minus x. So if x were minus 9, this would be false, so we would go minus minus 9, which is just 9, and we get the square root of 9. And when we do that, we see, in fact, y is just 3. So this is an example of where this whole expression evaluates to a number. It's going to either evaluate to x, or minus x, depending on how this if statement evaluates. Before we did the same thing and we assigned it to a variable, here we do the same thing, but we don't assign it to a variable, we simply operate on it by raising it to the 0.5 power, and then this whole result is assigned to the variable y, and then we print that out. And that is all.